Hello everybody and welcome back to the Space Engineers Beginner's Guide. Today we have got a little bit of a special thing for you. Today we're going to be talking about pistons, rotors and drills and a couple of things you can do to um, kind of set yourself off with mining. Now if you haven't got a mining ship or you know you may be struggling to build one or you don't want to build one or you just have a lot of resources by your base then what I'm about to do today may be a good idea for you. Now there's a couple of things to bear in mind when you're doing things like this. The first one is the space at which you have for your pistons. As you can see, the top of that piston has a big gap above it. If we go ahead and place that piston onto our block, you'll notice it's now got a piece on top. That piece doesn't correlate to the gap that the piston actually has, but the reason why it has that gap is to stop you from trying to place the piston down in that angle. You can see you try and do it in that angle it's not going to connect to anything now it in this instance it is because it's connecting to the, the side of the other piston however if you try to connect it where it was right next to it it wouldn't that's going in the ground Let's just go ahead there there you go it won't it won't place the piston down at all it also means as well if you're trying to place a piston in this area here per se it needs the clearance cover it like so just bear that in mind when you come to do the piston now what we're going to do is we're going to have a piece of drill that we can use to manually move around and drill out this magnesium now this magnesium is quite a bit of a way out and i'm not sure it's actually going to reach so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to hop off quickly make an adjustment to just pull it out a bit and then we'll start back again and welcome back everybody as you can see i've now made an extension on where we were before that's where we were previously and that's where we are now however in this form this is going to be completely unstable as soon as we build something on the top of here that's going to move around with the drills that are drilling into the ground this is going to snap break off do something so just to i'll you know to stop that from happening what you can do is if you jump up on your jetpack rotate around and place the block underneath you've now created a stable platform so your center of gravity is now moved so this is all absolutely fine now okay let's get back to where we were before and placing our piston on top and let's get it welded up now there's two sections to the piston the head the top piston part and the piston itself but if you get both welded sometimes it can be a little awkward to uh miss the other one oh we're a little low on power so let's just grab some more power yeah, sometimes it's a little hard to pick up on them piston heads as well as the rotor heads as well. So just make sure you don't miss them out. If you are not getting a connection, that's the first thing you should really check. It's just to see whether or not one of them has been missed. The colour of them are very similar to when they're being partially built. So sometimes it can be easily missed. Now, I want this drill to go into the ground, but I want to reduce my travel. So the best way to do that, instead of placing another piston on top, which is then creating a problem with stability, what I can do is I can go into my piston here by the little console there, and I can reverse the piston. As you can see now, the piston is now going up. So I can start thinking about placing things on top and getting the clearance that I need. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to do. The first one is I want to place a rotor on here. The reason why I want to place a rotor on is so that when I want to move the drill, to capture the outside parts i don't have to rely on having a rotor where the drill is and have the drill spinning which will require three drills i can only need i will only need to use one drill to capture a bit more of an area it'll make sense once we get built the next thing i want to do is place another conveyor junction here and then I'm going to replace in another piston here. Now, if you have problems with stability or weight issues, you can remove this piston here and have just a stationary circular drill. But I find it does usually hold out pretty well. I'm then going to place another junction here. And then I'm going to place another piston below. And then my final part that I'm going to use is a simple drill. Get the drill on and place a drill there. 
That's quite a small and effective drill system to start off with. It's pretty good for starting if you've only got a small base. It does require a bit of power if you're using everything together, which is why I've increased the amount of power we've got on the base. But effectively, this is going to do you quite well. It should give us enough clearance to go down under and grab that magnesium. If, however, it doesn't, what we can do is we can then place another piston on the end of there and place another drill underneath. And you look, you can probably tell it will fit another drill. But right now, I'm just going to try and risk going for the one and hopefully it'll fit. The next thing I want to do is to place some form of cockpit on. And I'm going to place it there so that I get a good view of where my drill's going. However, I'm not moving with my drill because if I do, the hole's probably not going to be big enough and the cockpit will hit the ground. Again, causing issues with the drill. This way I can see where the drill's pointing and see what the drill's up to. Plus I'm not burning power trying to control a drill. The last thing that you may want to consider doing is placing a detector on the drill itself. That detector will work a little bit ineffectively from what it is. However, you can see if you make this a bit more of a larger thing and you can do it by placing a, another connector here and placing some parts underneath. Um, some blast door parts. Uh, I'll cover stuff like that in a later episode where you can have pistons moving over. Because if you place um, if you place block here and a block here, this will blow up. As soon as you drill them in, it'll fly off in some opposite direction. So don't do that. Keep them nice and free. And when we go later on into the game, when we do things like advanced rovers or advanced flight and stuff like that, we'll talk about moving parts that can go over the top of things like blast doors. But for now, we're just doing a nice, basic, simple drill system, which is exactly what we've got here. So to save you time for me going back and forward, I've already placed everything in my build planner. I've just got the last components to finish here, which I'm just about to finish. And then we'll get it all welded up and then we'll move on back. I'll see you all shortly. And welcome back everybody. I'm just topping up my power just before we go into what we're going to do next. I didn't really need to because what I'm going to do next is paste inside it, but I want to just go over a couple of things. Now as you can see the drill has moved because whilst I was welding it, this this rotor here was free to move around. But as you can see, it is a small but effective system. There are a couple of things we could do to make this work really well. Uh, for extension purposes and stuff like that but i'm not going to go into that just now because there are a couple of things i want to mess around with with hinges because we've now got hinges to see if we can make a really effective drill system from the location we are here on our base but for now this is our basic drill to get ourselves some magnesium for weaponry obviously we haven't got a massive deal with weaponry but if you've run in with you know enemies on your drones bothering you and stuff like that i want to show you this effective tool and magnesium just happens to be there. Now, we can go ahead and sit inside our cockpit. And as you can see, we have a vision of where our drill is. If you hit your eye and go to your control panel and we head for pistons, you can see we've got three pistons. We happen to have three pistons on our drill. At the moment, there's no other pistons on the base, which so is a pretty easy guess as to where it is. However, we are also picking up cockpit and a second industrial cockpit the first thing to note is that's white these are colored the colored ones are on subgrids therefore they are not the ones we are sat in the one we are sat in is the white one so just bear that in mind to change things what you can do is you can place base drill cockpit straight away we know that's the base drill that's all we need to do now when it comes to that we don't need to do anything else the next thing we need to do is work out what piston does what again we can pretty much guess that this piston here is going to be the piston in front of us as you can see the drill is moving up and down now you notice there we wobbled slightly if we set sure and inertia tersa on all of the things on our subgrids that we have now it should provide us with a little bit more stationary um, when it comes to moving things around. So if I now do this again, you can see the jolt wasn't as much. It's a lot smoother. Now, the last thing I want is for my drill to fly down into the ground. So I'm going to set it to 0 0.1. 
which is a good speed. But as you can see, it's now going down. Hit the reverse, it's minus 0 0.1. I'm then going to change this to base, drill, piston, height. The second piston, if we hit reverse, is our in and out. Again, distance, piston. But I want to call it base drill distance piston. Just so we know that it's the base drill. Again, I'm going to set it to 0 0.1. Now be careful with the slider because if you go over, you're going to launch it clean out. Just nice and steady. And again, that's now ready to reverse. And it'll be nice and slowly. Now you may want to adjust the speed of this one a little bit. Because this one doesn't need to be just as fast. Uh, just as slow. So I'll probably set it to 0.3. Because that's a nice steady speed. Again with it being nice and steady. You're not throwing the drill out there. And you're not going to end up causing it to break off. The last one. Is obviously going to be our up and down. Now because this is already set in reverse. It's now 0.5. So when you change the speed of it to 0.1. It won't go anywhere. If you set it to minus 0 0.1, it's going to start going down. See. Now, we're going to change the name of this one to be Base Drill Main Height System. So we know that's the main one of the first one. The only other thing to do now is to deal with our left and right turn. However, there's a couple of things I want to comment on. The first one is, if you set these ridiculously fast, you're going to end up snapping things off. Things are going to go flying everywhere. If you also don't realize what you've set it to and it starts pushing it to the ground, you could also snap your drill heads off. You could do all sorts of things. Setting it nice and steady like this is a good way of doing it. The next thing I want to do is my piston heights here, I'm going to set as a block group. Drill, base, drill, height. What this is going to do is when I set my next part of this, it's going to act together. So when I want them both to go up, the drill itself will go up. And again, if I press them to go down, the drill itself will go down. What it's effectively doing is making one piston go in one direction and the other piston going in the other direction. And I'll show you what I mean. The distance piston, I'm not too worried about. The next thing I want to do is my advanced rotor. Since it's the only advanced rotor we have on the base because the other ones are standard rotors, I know straight away which one it is. However, it won't remain being the only advanced rotor. So let's go ahead and call this base drill rotor. You don't need to show inertia tensor because when you tend to show the inertia tensor for the base drill, it'll sometimes not turn. If we turn it off, you can see it rotates. Now, it'll keep rotating and we want it to keep rotating. What we want to do is enable rotor lock. The shear inertia tensor is usually decent when you've got it not like we have here, where it's like moving something quite small and you want it nice and steady. It really doesn't work in this instance because it's it's got too much tension to, to try and shear it. Now, there's a couple of things I want to point out. You see these detach here. If you have a problem with something, you have the ability to um, collect, like collect whatever you've got attached to your, to your uh, rotor or your piston. You can detach the head from the rotor. The same with the pistons. And again, add a piston head. So say you had to grind something off. You can detach it. By grinding it off, taking everything away, and reattach a new piston head, and then continue building. The good thing about the rotor one, which we can do at a later stage, is if you want to expand on something you've done with a rotor above it, you can do. Because you can just detach it, move it away, move whatever you want to move, and reattach it. But that's something on the side. Now that we've got everything set up, I want to be able to use my drill whilst I'm inside the cockpit. The same principle applies when it comes to doing everything else. We want to go to our groups first. We want to set our base drill height. And what we want to do is have reverse. We also want an emergency stop. So what I can do is I can actually create another group. 
But if we go to our control panel and go to base, you can see that we've got the base drill of the rotors and the pistons, and we can call this emergency stop. We can add the drill if we want to, but we won't worry too much about that. I can then go back to my group. I can find the emergency stop. Toggle blocks on off. If something goes wrong now and I need to seriously stop it, I can just press that and everything's off. It will stop everything. Everything's now back on, you get the audible click. Now, if I click this now, as you can see, we are going lower. If I jump out very quickly, you can see that not only is one piston going up, the other piston is going down. It looks a little weird at first, but you get it. Well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to stop that now. I'm just going to use the emergency stop for now. The next thing I want to do is I want to place my next drill. Uh, sorry, my next piston. So if we go to base, we want the distance piston. And again, we want to reverse it. But then we want to stop this one. Because now what I can do is I can expand, extend outwards. Okay, this one may not need the show nurse tensor, so let's just turn that off. Base drill distance. Oh, sorry, we toggled the we turned the block off, didn't we? There we go. And then if I press three, it stops it. Quickly stop that. There we go. Now, as you notice then, when I press the emergency stop, because I've turned this off. It continued moving forward because I've set it to toggle block on off to get around that what you can do is you can leave that as toggle block on off and your emergency stop block you can have as toggle block off so all that means now is no matter what state any of these parts are in It'll turn them all off. You then need to physically go back in and turn them all back on. Or you can have them all switched to toggle block on. Because then what you're going to do is, is you're then going to turn them all on or all off. That's like the right one there. There we go. So now. What I can do is I can I can then turn them all back on again and then turn that back on. So if that's set like so and I turn them all off, if I then turn them all back on again, it's going to continue. But I can turn it off individually. And then we can emergency stop again. Just a little bit of a safety tip. The next thing I want to do is to be able to rotate. Real rotation. What I tend to do is I place in the middle my reverse uh, sorry to the side I then place my rotor lock on off because I might be doing something close by to my drills going up or down I may want to stop something really quickly while I'm rotating round and as you can see it won't do anything at all as I turn that off it should start to rotate round Rotor. That's a part of your emergency stop. As you can see, now if I'm too busy doing something and I don't realise, oh shit, insta stop. Just bear that in mind. Your rotor lock and you're turning your, your, your power on and off for them is slightly different. But that means it's still activated, so if I then release it again, I can move it around. So let's go ahead and now turn everything on. Now... I've got a slight problem. How do I stop my drills? Well, sorry, how do I stop them going lower down? We need to make a slight adjustment. So again, what we can do is we can go back to our groups. We can then go to our base drill height. We can then move. We can either place it in there. But if we've got the distance, so we could go height, toggle block on off. We then need to go to the Base 
fill distance. Uh, we want that reverse. Oh, was that? Hi. Oh, you know me. Base drill distance. Okay, so yeah. With base drill height, lock on. Base drill distance. Reverse. Base drill distance. Gone off. So now you've got your height control, your distance control, and we've got the reverse. Just want to slightly adjust, obviously, a base drill. So I have my rotor lock on off. And my reverse. Now, the rotor for me is just the opposite way around, just because I find it easy to just hit that button when I'm nearby to doing my controls of that. We've got our emergency stop. The last thing we need now is to have our block tools. Now, if I drag the block tool on there, I'm going to have to mouse click. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to actually be able to drill. But I don't know which drill it is because they're all called drill. Drill, drill, drill. Easiest way, so I'm going to block on. We know now that that's the drill. So we can now call this base drill. Head to back to our blocks. Head back to base. Toggle block on off. Now as you can see, things are starting to rock about quite a lot. But we should have a quite a steady rotation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the blocks on. And you can see now that it's now grinding into the ground. We're probably going to miss the magnesium because the magnesium's a bit over here. But you can see it's a nice steady pace. The one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to have it too fast so it's hitting the ground. Because if it starts hitting the ground, it causes problems with the drill. It can snap the drill. You're not getting as much uh, resources because sometimes it loses the resources because the drill becomes full quite quickly. This is a nice steady pace. And the likelihood is, oh, we're actually possibly going to hit magnesium at this level. If you struggle to hit the magnesium, then you just do, as I said, about placing another piston on it. I haven't placed two pistons on because I'm hoping the level we get will actually re mag reach magnesium. But we'll just see. Right, we have reached the magnesium, I think. Or is that just the stone? Okay, let's go. So what we can do is we can now sit inside our cockpit and you can see we've got a nice good view. The only thing we don't have is lighting, but I won't worry too much about lighting. But what we can do, we can search for base drill. You can see we're collecting stone. Don't worry about the collecting the stone, your base will mass use all that quite quickly. Um, if you've got a backlog like I do, then it may struggle. Because obviously I've got nickel and all that lot in there, so it, they take a little bit more to grind through. See, I've got a collection of stone here. Just resolve that, you can just drag it into there. And it'll just keep producing what it can through it, and it'll keep topping it up. Another way you can do it is just drag that out. Drag that out, and drag that out, and it should hopefully keep topping up with stone, which it seems to be doing. You can see it's also still collecting stone even though we've completely stopped. Now, we haven't reached magnesium, but that might be because we're not quite over it. So I'm now going to bring my drill back. I'm then going to try and rotate, or extend should I say. Bear in mind if you extend out like so, you can see it's working against. You can hear it banging around. That's because it's trying to get its way back up, but it's not getting a clear clearance coming back up. So just wait until the drill comes out. And you can usually tell from where the dust is going around the drill head. As you can see, it's just bouncing around because it can't go anywhere. Let's get it out. It's almost out of the hole now. Now, I'm not skipping this here because then you can see that everything can be done nice and easy within the cockpit.
Let's try and now extend out slightly. We might just not be clear enough, but he should clear it quick enough, I think. You see the sparks? It means it's not quite clear off the ground, but it should pass over it, hopefully. And it seems to be passing over quite nicely. There we go. Let's just pop out a second. Now, as you can see, we're at full extension there. But we've got enough now to make... I don't know why it's actually doing. It's not damaging itself, is it? No. Nope. Why it's doing that? Normally it does that when it's grinding. Might be a bit of a bug, that. Right, let's rotate ourselves. Now you can see, because we're extended, the rotation's a little bit iffy. But let's try and see if we can get the magnesium. It's not 100% this, but it's usually pretty good. Right. We're extending out as much as we can, so let's go ahead and drop the drill down and see if we can get the magnesium. I'm going to let that continue down, and hopefully by the time we're finished, we can see it. The point to make out about this is it's a very simple and a very effective uh, way of drilling stuff around your base there's a lot of things you can do with it that you can expand on it you can place more drills on you can place a rotor here and have the drill head spin you'll obviously gain that larger hole the larger diameter but you'll lose that with the traction of pulling it back in because you'll not be able to get a drill in between there to spin just bear that in mind if you start retracting that you could end up causing damage to your main structure what you can also do as well which i will cover at a later stage is you can actually not have this section here what you can do is if you place a rotor here you then place a conveyor junction here you can then place pistons along the way and in between the pistons you can place more junctions and placing wheels on the junctions the only downside to that is is it skips when you try and rotate it and so there are a few things you need to do to be able to have it where it's nice and comfortably moving around that's very, very advanced and not something I want to go into at this stage because we just want to basically mine stuff out. The likelihood is, is we might not be low enough, so we may have to place another drill here. But that's not a problem. I did say it was a bit 50-50 as to whether we will reach it. And as you can see, it's a fairly deep hole. If we'd have placed a few more heads on there, we'd have had a nice chunk of... Um, stone and you can obviously do it all the way around the circumference of this rotation here let's have a look you don't want to get down where them drill heads are because they tend to hurt Okay, so it looks like all it's gathering is stone. I don't, I can't see any magnesium anywhere. A lot of stone, nickel, silicon. So unfortunately, this drill doesn't go high enough. There's a couple of things we can do. If you try and disconnect this as is, all you're going to achieve is the drill dropping and nothing else. But it does mean that we don't have to do anything with the piston. All you need to do is you just need to reverse it. Let it come back up. Take the drill off. Place another piston on. And you get in an even further extension. Just bear in mind that for every drill you add, uh, sorry, for every piston you add onto this, make the same adjustments as you did. And then make sure the speed is right. Bear in mind now it's going to go down 0 0.3 meters rather than 0 0.2 meters which you should handle quite nicely, but just bear that in mind that you're going to get down into that hole a lot quicker. So I'm just going to cut here now quickly. I'm going to place another piston on, and you can see the effects it's going to have. And welcome back, everybody. And as you can see, the drill is now hitting the magnesium that we wanted. So we did need the two drill pieces, which is absolutely fine. Sometimes it is slightly closer to the surface, but unfortunately it's not on this map. That is absolutely fine. A couple of points before we disappear. Once you have um, made additions, make sure you go into your control panel and reset your groups. So as you can see, I've added the second piston drill there. 
called it the same, a similar name, added it to the group by just pressing the control key. Click on that, you can remove it, save, press control, save, and it adds it. Just remember to do that and obviously do the same for the new drill, placing it onto your hotbar, and the same again for your emergency stop. So they're the adjustments you need to make. Now, that is pretty much it for this a very basic drill piece, and it, it it's a slight extension on a very well-known drill piece that most people do start to use on the starter base, just by allowing you to have that little bit of freedom of turning left and right. The one last thing I'm going to say before we disappear is that if your rotor, your base drill there, is struggling to turn, then look at your torque. Slightly increase your torque if you need to, but be careful because if you place too much torque, you will just snap the drill clean off again. So just bear that in mind, if you're struggling to rotate, just increase that torque a little bit. Always double check that the toggle block is on. At the moment the block is obviously off. And make sure the rotor lock is on. As you can see the rotor lock's on. And don't use it whilst you're trying to drill. So that's going to be it for this episode. Hopefully you've learned a couple of bits about the drills. Using them in the bases. The only downside to these is they're quite expensive when using a large grid. But the advantage is, is it does clear a lot of space. It gives you a load of stone. Which is going to help you with iron, silicon and nickel. And obviously the magnesium we've now gathered. You can do a lot of things with this. You can expand on it. You can have a rotor at the end as I say. Having three drills on with rotor. Or even just two drills with a rotor. And a conveyor junction in the middle. Spinning around is going to make a much much bigger hole. But just bear in mind if you're going to retract your drills. That you're not still spinning it. And that it doesn't catch on the internal section. Because if it does catch. You're going to just cleanly snap it off. I've done it with. I've done this setup in a slightly different way with up to 20 drills on it before now and I've had them all rotated at a nice steady pace cleaning an entire section of ore and usually you're getting two or three ores in that area as well we will go into building some stuff like that when we build the drill platform this is just to show you a very basic design and we're going to expand on this possibly on the next episode or, or one shortly after because we've got nickel, silicon and magnesium that our detector is picking up. Remember the detector is an optional, you do not need to put that on if you don't want to. But that's going to be me for this episode, it's a bit of a long one but hopefully it's helped you just learn a few things about the pistons and the, the rotors that you can do you can manipulate this in many other ways as well not just with the drills which is why i've covered it but also showing you how you can use it in the drill effective way it's kind of cool using it this way as well because you're almost like you're digging around there is a way you can do stuff like that by using scripts where you can have it where your mouse wheel will, will respond to where you're pointing it to but that's getting into a lot of different um, advanced stuff but until next time everybody take care for now I'll see you on the next one bye bye for now